Good evening, grave robbers, and welcome back to the television graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Lara Prince and Noah Houlihan. We have come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, find out which ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which ones should just stay doomed. This is a podcast in which we'll analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season or only one episode. With me, as always, is Noah Houlihan. I forgot what the challenge was. Aww. I love it. Uh, so we are doing the U.S. version of Taskmaster by popular demand. Uh, this has been on the list for quite some time. It was also picked by our super cool patron, Matthew. So thank you so much for picking U.S. Taskmaster. Uh, yeah, this has been on the list for quite some time. So I'm glad we're finally jumping into this. And we jump into it by... Pouring one out. What do you got there, Lara? Uh, so I have a pretty basic drink. It's kind of just like a blue margarita. Mm-hmm. It's just like some tequila, some lime juice, a little bit of blue curacao, and a, um, a marshmallow pea. I like how you get all this fancy stuff, and you're like, ah, this is basic. This is just basic drink for me. It's, it's a basic margarita with a little blue curacao for color, and it's called the 101st Duck. Oh, okay, that's fun. I like it. I like it. How is it? It's a blue margarita. All right. I want to pass this time, because I don't... I'm, I need to take a break from tequila and tequila-like beverages <laughs> at this time. Tequila and tequila adjacent. So, uh, I made... A bramble. I was trying to find one of the most British cocktails. Okay. And what they suggested was a bramble. And by that, I mean the internet, (laughs) Google. And I tried to make an American version of it. So instead of gin, I have vodka. Okay. Uh, And then it's supposed to have a simple or sugar syrup. Mm -hmm. I didn't have sugar syrup. So I made it out of just water and and sugar. Which is what simple syrup is. Which is what it is. Uh, so that should be fine. Uh, and then uh, lemon juice, which I had some lemon juice. And then there's a, a special liquor that's called like creme de something. And you didn't have that, so you used creme de menthe, didn't you? No, oh. <laughs> no. It, I looked up what it was, and it is a liquor that's mixed with vodka and blackberries. And I was like, well, I already put vodka in this and i have blackberries so i blended it and then it's supposed to be served over crushed ice so i made it in the blender i think i might have gone too heavy on the blackberries okay because this is very dark yeah it looks not what it looked like in the picture but i'm gonna give this a try it's all it's also a bit heady (laughs) but mm, oh it smells very fruity wow yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's very fruity. It's very fruity. It's very tart. It's very tart. It's and very, very tart. seedy. Yeah, well, because of the blackberries. Uh. <laughs> you have some on your lip. Uh, it's also supposed to... It's mixed with vodka and red wine, usually, is the is the uh, the creme thing that I can't think of the name of. The only wine we really had was champagne and beatbox. And I was like... I no, we need... have Moscato. Oh, did we have we Moscato? We have like a lot of Moscato. Oh, well, I missed it when I was doing this. So I have this... It's pretty... It's it's better than I expected it to be, which is pretty fitting. All right. That's fair. So let's jump into Taskmaster, starring Reggie Watts. Now, in this, Reggie Watts is the Taskmaster. Yeah, it's the Greg Davis role. But what does that mean? I'm Reggie Watson. This is Taskmaster, and I am the Taskmaster. But wait, what does that mean? It's how every episode starts. Every episode starts with. I, I should. Let's actually start with this. We're huge Taskmaster fans. I love Taskmaster. So we're coming from a place of absolute love for the original Taskmaster. We watched. We're up to episode 12, or season 12 of Taskmaster. Yes. And I don't know why we fell off of it at that point, but we love the first 11 seasons. Oh, I know, because they stopped being free on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that slowed us down a bit. But we loved it. We absolutely loved it. And we were excited to see this, like, new version of it from America. And it starts with Reggie Watts saying, 
uh, I'm the Taskmaster, but what does that mean? And then it's the opening theme, which is the original opening theme from the British vers- version, except Reggie Watts talks over it the whole time, explaining the premise of the show. Which I don't love. I'm guessing the reason they do that is because normally they would show just that opening sequence with music and clips from the season. And then it would cut to Greg Davis saying, I am the taskmaster. I have done this, 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 and this. Yeah. This seems to me to be an attempt by the show to cut time. Yes, and we will see a few of these types of attempts. Yeah, they are blending the opening sequence and the opening of the show together to kind of condense things. Why would they do such a thing, Laura? Well, in the U- in the uh, the UK, Taskmaster runs one hour, and there are fewer advert breaks mm. in uh, uh, shorter advert breaks in a UK television show versus a US television show. Mm-hmm. This runs, I believe every episode was exactly 21 minutes and 45 seconds. Yes. So this is airing in a very tight uh, half hour time slot. Yeah. So that's already a huge concern that we've lost more than half of the time because British shows are a bit longer because there's less ad breaks. It's particularly irritating uh, when you find out how this aired. Right. Uh, They aired in uh, two... They aired twice in a row. Like, they aired two episodes in a double time slot. Really? So they could have just made four one-hour episodes and perhaps weaseled in an extra task each episode. Yeah, I think that would have made more sense. brought back the prize task. Yes. Because like UK Taskmaster, every episode has a prize. But unlike UK Taskmaster, uh, where there's a prize task... There is uh, one person brings in a prize per episode. Yes. Now this, I hate it. Well, this is very important. I want to bring this up. The way the prize tax work in England is there would be some sort of topic, like bring in the best thing starting with G. Yeah. And they're bringing in something that they could lose, but there's also the fact that of if I bring in something weak... I won't win this task and I have more of a chance of losing it. But if I bring in something great and then end up losing anyway, I lost a great thing. thing. So like that is interesting. It is also a great way to get to know these people. Yeah. Because I think one of the greatest prize tasks of all time is from season 11 of Taskmaster. And it's bring in your something that makes you look Tough. <laughs> and like TikTok, tough guy o'clock. You can learn so much about each one of these contestants based on the thing they brought in. Like uh Charlotte Ritchie brings in a leather hat. And you're like, ooh, how tough. It's a leather hat. Jamali, who is a tougher guy, but simpler, is just like, I brought a board with a nail in it. Yeah. Done. And then, uh, who's our favorite guy? Which Mike Wozniak. Mike Wozniak shaves his head into a mohawk. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, a mohawk. So, like, you learn and, like, you get a feel for all these people as characters in a TV show from the prize tasks. Because on top of uh, the bringing something in, this is the only time you really get to see the contestants arguing for points. Yes. So you kind of get to see, like, their mindset more. And the dynamics between people. So I'm not sure if you caught this. Uh, The way it's going to work in America is the contestants are going to take turns just bringing in a prize. Mm -hmm. And it should be something that they like. Do you remember what Alex says in the first one? No. I wrote it down. Well, we start... With the prize, each week someone will bring in a personal possession, something they absolutely don't want to lose, okay? And it's that much-loved possession that the winner will take home at the end of the show. It's an important part of the format. Repeat that. It is a very important part of the format. To me, it sounds like it's Alex Horn being like, 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, Alex Horn... <laughs> I, I know that this is wrong. Alex Horn has fully acknowledged he made too many compromises with Comedy mm-hmm. Central. And that is one that sticks out. So, we should talk about who these people are really quickly. Yes. Our taskmaster is Reggie Watts. Yes. Reggie Watts is a musical comedian of sorts. You probably know him best from... Uh, he's the band on... Not The Tonight Show, because that's The Roots. I think he's the band for James Corden, is, Reg, is Reggie Watts. But what I knew him from was he was the house musician on Comedy Bang Bang. On Comedy Bang Bang as well, yes. Because uh, I, I don't watch... I've never seen an entire episode of The James Corden Show. Right. Um, because why? Um, so I knew him as the Comedy Bang Bang guy. Uh, Reggie Watts also has a fantastic TED Talk that's just him performing a song for like... Eight minutes. Good for him. It's really cool. Uh, the taskmaster assistant is a very important role. Yeah. Usually in England, this is little, little Alex, Alex Horn, Horn. Uh, who is kind of this weird, almost submissive slave to the taskmaster. Their uh, their relationship evolves over the seasons. It first starts off as this very like uncle nephew nephew mm-hmm. desperately attempting to get approval. And then it kind of evolves into an implied BDSM relationship. Yeah. And then over time, the subtext feels more like texty text. Mm -hmm. And then it now just kind of settled into like a a long term dynamic. Yeah. Like this is just, it's not any of those things. It's just Greg and Alex. Yeah. In the American version, though, it is Alex Horn. He is lost. The word little. And that is a really good example of what's wrong with this show. Well, he's a little Alex Horn because despite being six foot two, uh, Greg Davis is huge. Right. He's a tall. T- so next to Greg Davis is the only way Alex Horn looks short. Well, what I'm saying more of is this is Alex's show. Alex created Taskmaster. He writes all the tasks. He comes up with all this fun stuff. It's his show. Right. And that always feels like a reveal when you talk to Taskmaster fans who watch the British version, where it's like, oh, really? Greg's not in charge? It's Alex? Oh, interesting. Oh, this is all the show. Okay, interesting. That facade is kind of missing. Yeah. Like, throughout this show, there's parts where it feels like Alex is guiding Reggie Watts through his role. Yes. Uh, We never really totally get... Like, Greg Davis has more authority than Reggie Watts really puts forward. Mm -hmm. Um, Reggie Watts is not uh, capricious enough. Mm. He is not... um, There's not a night. He's not douchey enough. Because there's like a distance and an unkindness with Greg Davis. Which is especially fun in season one with like... um, when it's like somebody we find out later he's like close friends with. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't treat that person better. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but they do get acknowledged. Like the infamous uh, season seven prize task when Rod uh, brings in a picture of Greg sleeping. Yeah, right. I saw you out, didn't? No, you didn't. <laughs> and he like was hiding in Greg's closet. Yeah. Also, these prize tasks are the only, like, prepared bit Mm -hmm. they get to do. And so you get to know a lot about them from the prepared bit. Right. Like, oh, what is this person gonna do if you Mm. give them a moment to think about it? Yeah. Uh, So let's talk about these contestants. Yes. We have Dylan, who I I don't know who that is, but he's a stand-up comedian, I believe. Dylan Francis. Um... He is also a music producer. He is DJ Hansel. Uh, he's a social media star. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah, he's mostly known for music. Okay, interesting. He used to work with, like, Diplo. Uh, then we have child actor Freddie. Freddie Highmore. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Highmore is best known for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. 
uh, Finding Neverland, and more recently, he plays the titular Good Doctor. Yes, he was Charlie in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with Johnny Depp. Yes, and uh, he was also, and this will be relevant later, Norman Bates in the Norman Bates TV series that ran yeah. right around when this was run. Bates Motel? Yes. Uh, I couldn't remember if it was called Bates Motel or Norman Bates. And then we got Katie, or Kate. Kate Berlant. Uh, who is an improver. Yes. So she she does improv. <laughs> it's tough. Improv's a tough, it's a tough field. There's not a lot of room at the top of the improv mountain. Yeah. I mean, she's also an actor. Uh, she was most recently seen in I Can't Believe We Didn't Have to Watch It, Don't Worry Darling. Oh, uh, but she's kind of just been, like, a that guy. Act- she's a character actress. Uh, she was in an episode of Loki as a Ren Fair woman. Ooh. Uh, she does some voice work. Gotcha. Uh, then we have Lisa Lampanelli, who I did not recognize. Lisa Lampanelli was always this kind of, like, bigger woman that you probably know from, like, Comedy Central roasts. That's important. I'm bringing that up later. Uh, But she has lost a lot of weight to the point that she looks younger now. And she's dyed her hair blue, which also makes her look younger. And she's like an undercut. Yeah. So she's that like kind of half shaved look. Mm -hmm. Uh, She looks like she is about to scoff at your cocktail order. (laughs) (laughs) And then you got Ron Funches. Best... Best known in my heart as King Shark in the Harley Quinn series. Yeah. He also won a lot of episodes at midnight. He's one of my favorite comedians. I love him so much. He's like a big teddy bear. He's also a big wrestling fan. He's a big wrestling fan because I remember there's the one year we had a WrestleMania party. And after every match, we just pulled up Ron Funch's Twitter just to see what he was saying. Uh, that's now a fine WrestleMania tradition for oh, me. Oh, yeah. Anytime I do anything wrestling related, uh, I look up what Ron Funch's opinion on it is because it's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love Ron Funch's. Yeah. Uh, he also lost a lot of weight, which I did not realize. And he looked good. He looked really good. Uh, so those are our contestants. Uh, we will be having a prize task... Uh, or not, no prize task. I forget even what we're playing for. Dylan Francis's laptop. Oh, right, right. And then we get our first challenge. And this is a challenge that I don't think appears on British Taskmaster, but don't get used to that. Uh, throw this basketball through the hoop. You may not use your hands, you may not touch it with your hands, and you may not wear gloves or anything that could be considered gloves. You really uh, don't think they used this one in Taskmaster UK? Did they already? Series 5. Oh, all right. That's the uh, Ashling B, Mark Watson, Bob Mortimer, Nish Kumar, Sally Phillips season. Oh, I do not remember this. So. Also, shout out to Taskmaster.info, which has. Everything? uh, It has exactly what episode any reoccurring task Mm -hmm. appeared in, which is super helpful for this. Uh. Dylan puts it in a basket and throws it through. Uh, Ron puts it in a flower pot and throws it through. Uh, Fred uh, pulls down the hoop so that it's easier to just get the ball through. Well, first, Freddy tries to kick it. Oh, yeah. He does some soccer. Because he's English. Because he's he's English. Yeah. So, uh, Freddy dives in and pulls down the net and kicks it in. And I want to say that... Mm-hmm. Ron and Dylan use tools. I actually, ha- I don't even have notes about Kate's because it's so quick. Oh, oh, I have notes oh, about Kate's. excuse me. Kate's is after the... Yeah, after the Kate's break. Kate's is after the break. That's why I don't see it. Um, Lisa, I don't even remember what it does. I just know it took her 14 minutes. Uh, she tries to use pillows. Right. So, Kate one-shots it. Yes. Swish, baby. Yeah, she puts it on a crutch. And swishes it through, gets a big, like, applause. And then Alex is like, hey, there's just a little thing we got to talk about. You kind of brush it with your hand. And you go, no, it's going to be a Joe Wilkinson. Yeah. and Which is another famous Taskmaster moment. She just drops it for a moment, goes back, picks up the basketball with her hand, puts it on the crutch, and then throws it through. So she gets disqualified. Now, you might be thinking, whoa, you guys are going really quick. So are they. 
Yeah. Like, there is not a lot of time watching the task. Like, I wrote down that Lisa Lampanelli's took 14 minutes and 20 seconds. But she's only shown doing it for, like, a minute. Tops. Because we are flying through this. We see a minute of each person at most. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to comment about Freddy. Okay. Yeah, I do too. Freddy is is English. We say that. And Mm -hmm. um, with he pulls it down and tries to kick it through. Freddy also has gone on record as saying he agreed to do the United States Taskmaster because he liked... The UK Taskmaster. Like, as soon as he pulled down that hoop, Laura and I looked at each other like, huh, bet he's seen the show before. Yes. Um, which is incredible because it does not help him as much as you would think. Yeah. <laughs> Until it does. Uh, the, the thing that I really want to talk about is this DQ, though. Yes. So, there's a very famous... Uh, Taskmaster episode. We're going to be spoiling a lot of Taskmaster in I general. I had that thought. Like, I highly recommend that you shut off our podcast and go watch Taskmaster. That's how much we love Taskmasters. I'm okay telling you not to listen to this and go watch all of Taskmaster. Oh my god. Uh, but there's a very famous If you're one. looking for, like, a comfort show that's mm. never scary and is always just, like, kind of a good time, I cannot recommend... Uh, I went through a lot of anxiety last mm-hmm. year. And Taskmaster was very much my, like, lifeboat for that yeah. time in my life. If nothing else, watch this task and then come back, which is very simple. Uh, th- get this potato in the golf hole. You may not step on the red green. And basically the golf green is red because that's fun and silly. Go watch that. Okay, you back. All right, so for those of you who didn't go watch it, you're wrong. But Joe Wilkinson one-shots it immediately, just swish. And everyone applauds and loses their mind. They then go back and show that his toe accidentally steps on the green. So he begs for the points. He gets on his knees and he pleads, please don't take this away from me. It's incredible. Uh, then the contestants kind of discuss it and... They put it to a vote, don't they? Yeah, Greg says, this is unprecedented. I'm going to let your opponents decide if you should get the points. So they send him out of the room. Oh. And then they have a whole discussion about whether or not he should get the points. It, the vote goes to a draw. So Greg decides to disqualify him. And then the people who voted not to give him the points are like, that's that's harsh. That's really harsh. It's amazing. It is the best and most Taskmaster thing that I can point to. Like, this one moment really encapsulates everything that Taskmaster is. Yes. You have that exact same moment to open Taskmaster US. And you don't take and it. And all it is is, I'm going to have to disqualify you. Moving on. Because they don't have time to do the chat show. Yeah, I mean, that losing that chat show aspect really does hurt the show mm-hmm. so much. Um, so our next one is uh, do something backward. Or we're going to film something backwards. Make sure it looks cool going forward. Yeah. This is another very famous Taskmaster mm-hmm. task. Um, there's a particular uh, task... That is, uh, there, there is a particular person. I, I was trying to figure out how to put it. Uh, there's a particular person's version of this that is easily the best one. Mm-hmm. It's in the second episode of the first Taskmaster, and Ramesh does. We're talking about the British one now. Yes, the UK Taskmaster. Romesh does something called Tree Wizard. Tree Wizard, back from the dead to create some balloons. Tree Wizard. Yes. And it is one of those tasks, uh, much like the Mohawk. Yeah. That has kind of grown past its episode and even its season. Mm -hmm. If you like look up Taskmaster merch on Etsy, Mm -hmm. you will find things that reference Tree Wizard. Yes. What it is, is basically Romesh popped some balloons but when played backwards it looks like he summoned balloons wouldn't you know it 
tree was a... That's exactly what Ron Funches does. He he makes balloons appear and then he pretends like they fly him away. So great. So I was like, that was the only time that I ever really questioned the legitimacy of Taskmaster. That I was like, did someone feed him that idea? Because the fact that it's so similar really, like, irked me. I, it's not, if he'd had, like, a little song to it, I would have been a little more upset. Mm-hmm. But Ron Funch is just, is giggling as <laughs> yeah. he flies away. True. Uh, Dylan gets out of the hot tub, walks to the pool, swims, gets out, and hula hoops. Yeah. Which is pretty decent. Uh, Kate drags a truck with Alex on it to a trash can that has an impeached Trump banner. Which is also what happened in the British Taskmaster, except for the impeached Trump thing. But that's what, uh, what's his name? He does a thing where it looks like he's pulling a truck. Josh Whittacombe. Josh Whittacombe does that. So again, I was like, that's suspicious. Lisa just cooks. So it's like food uncooking, eggs going back in the shell. Yeah. Yeah. And then Freddy cleans up Alex. Yeah. Which I think might be my favorite one. I think it's the best executed. Yeah. Because Freddy's English and has definitely seen this episode. Mm -hmm. So what he's actually doing is making him dirty. Yeah. But when played backwards, it looks like it cleans him. Very fun. So that's two tasks down. Yeah. It's time for the final task of the show. Yeah. And the final task of the show is always done live. Yeah. But like... We're only getting three tasks per episode. Yeah. Wild. And uh, this this tent was done in, um, in again, in season one of Taskmaster. Mm-hmm. It the- is, you have to pop open a tent, get in the tent, zip up the tent, put on a onesie, and then get out of the tent. Yes. Uh, some of us know that we could be doing this quite easily, uh, if you're a theater kid or a wrestler mm-hmm. and you're used to getting changed quickly in small spaces into weird yeah. clothing, you're looking at this like, Meh. it's Tuesday. Yeah. I think I have done this with a onesie in a ladies room smaller than a pop-up tent. Uh, the only note I have here is that I was happy that Ron's onesie was a shark. I was like, oh, he's a shark. Uh, I have a note. He's a shark. Ron, Yay. <laughs> Uh, you don't have what he says while he's struggling, because he comes in last. No. Are you okay, Ron? No, I don't know how to put on a onesie. <laughs> Which we only hear from his tent. Yeah. Because everyone else has emerged and is just staring at him. <laughs> and then Freddy wins the episode. Yeah. Uh, because Freddy, uh, he, does, he doesn't really do great on any of the tasks. But he never gets DQ'd and he comes in like second in every task. And I wanted to point out that you can never win a task and win an episode. Oh, yeah. Because if someone else, if like Kate gets Mm DQ'd, because Kate wins the the towing a truck challenge, she wins that. Mm -hmm. But her DQ in the uh, basketball one means that she can't get any more than 10 points. Yeah. So we know the math is also a little simpler. In mm-hmm. this, because uh, there's only 15 points. There's not a lot of bonus points. There's not a lot of shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, so Freddie wins the episode. Dylan asks if they can strike a deal later, and Freddie says no. <laughs> and then at the very end, Reggie Watts goes, And remember, good night. And it makes me angry. I, I hate remember good night. What I hate even more is next time on Taskmaster. And they spoil a bunch of stuff. I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, you honestly think that you need to tease the next episode to get us to come back? Especially now that I know that it was coming on next. Yeah. Like, think of that wasted time. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it's a full minute of here's what's happening in a minute. Yes. Yes, and I I hate hate it. it. I Um. hate it. Episode two, uh, Freddy has the prize task, and he puts up his uh, lifelong beloved stuffy, Raccoon. And I'm like, I want to go back in time and fight for it. So now that, yeah, now that we've gotten one episode down, yeah, I know it took us a half hour to get one episode down. I think we're going to be flying through this, guys. Yeah. Because honestly, when it comes to the challenges, I don't have a lot to say. I have a lot to say about the 
format, but I don't have a lot to say about the challenges. So let's just get through this. Uh, this is the infamous paint a horse while riding a horse. Which I find very funny because uh, Little Alex Horn hates this challenge. Really? He says it, like, it never works uh, because I uh, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts because yeah. I'm busy uh, right. making one. <laughs> uh, but I do listen to Ed Gamble's excellent Taskmaster podcast because mm-hmm. uh, he does episodes with the people who've been on the show. And this has always been like a problem. They've tried to do it a couple times and it's just like been a pain. Uh, this is in the first episode of the first season of UK Taskmaster. I like I like these subjective tasks where it is like make a thing and then the Taskmaster will decide which one is the best. And I like the art ones because you get to put all of them next to each other and kind of like giggle at it. Yes. For some reason, they don't have Freddy on a horse. No, and they're never... They claim it's because he's young and because they think he's too short to get up on the horse. Yeah. Uh, But knowing that he's 25, uh, Dylan and Kate are both 30. Right. And I understand picking on a, a, a contestant. It's something that happens very often in Taskmaster. Yes. But I don't think this was effective because this Taskmaster is very concerned with who's winning. Uh, yes. Because every episode, more than once, they will not just tell you the scores but the overall season scores. Yes. Often with US or with UK Taskmaster, you really don't know who's winning the season. Like, that's not important data. And you don't totally care. And like, (laughs) it makes it a fun surprise at the end. This, I feel like the whole time people were like, okay, so if I win this and this, that's going to put me in first place overall. Or if like, if they mess up, that's going to bring them down. I'll move up even if I don't get first. Like, it felt too numbersy a lot of the time. And there is a feeling of Freddy got an unfair advantage. Yeah, and they're mad about it. And, like, you can tell that they're upset about it. They don't really go into detail about it because they cut stuff. Yeah, because I have read people's firsthand accounts of Taskmaster UK tapings, and they said... Uh, they're about two to three hours long. That makes sense. To be cut down to what we see. To, yeah, cut down to an hour. Uh, which means we get like all killer, no filler. Mm-hmm. You get the best bits of the chat. Yeah. Uh, and the chatting is so important to the series. And I think it's just such a giant bummer that we don't get it as much in this show. Um, but that's just me complaining again about the same thing. Uh, Ron Funches, it must be mentioned during this challenge, is the happiest Ron Funches. Yeah. I forgot what the challenge is. Yeah, he's just so happy to be riding a horse, which is wonderful. Uh, and Lisa starts in her antagonizing Alex. She hates Alex through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. She's trying to do the, like... Uh, she does it in the first episode a little bit as well, but Lisa is the contestant that antagonizes Alex. Yes. And the problem with this is... And I've, I've kind of brought it up before. She hates Alex because of the tasks. Like, I can't believe you're asking me to do this. Rather than, I can't believe Reggie's making me do this. The kayfabe of the British show is everybody's willing to do these tasks because Greg Davis is the great and grand taskmaster and pleasing him is above everything. Yes. That is entirely lost in this. Yes, uh, which is a huge problem. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they all of them are bad. Yeah, all of the horses are. They bad. paint horses. It's not great. Um, they they do another classic task that I have one thing I really want to bring up here. Yeah, it is the ball in the tennis tube task. Yeah, there is a tennis ball in the tube task. Right a, a ping pong ball at the bottom of a of a pipe. And you have to get the ping pong ball out, but you can't move the pipe. So logically, you fill it with water, but there are holes in the pipe, so you plug the holes, and then you get the ping pong ball. 
There is a great moment where Lisa Lampanelli is trying to use a vacuum. Yeah. And somehow <laughs> drops the entire vacuum cleaner into the pipe. And it's one of the few times I really see Alex Horn lose it. <laughs> Alex Horn, his breaks are few, but incredible. Yeah. Uh, there's one in one, I can't remember what task it was, but I think it might be during the second Champion of Champions, where somebody throws something at the wall and just slides off and Alex mm. loses it. Right. But Alex, Alex super breaks during this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Freddie does get a single task in this. Uh, he gets the, you cannot use your own accent. So he uses like a weird liver puddling accent. Yeah. It's not enough to be a troll. Like the trolls in British Taskmaster, like they would choose one contestant and make them like count beans in a fried beans can. There's no way anyone can know what how many there are in a can of that. Uh, you can if you're the Taskmaster. Which is missing. Mm-hmm. That like kind of being a jerk. Yeah. Or when they asked Josh Whittacombe to sing along with the Taskmaster theme. It only made him do it. That's great. They did it to Josh Whittacom a bunch. Yeah, Josh Whittacom was a great person to like pick on. Uh, I would. This one made me think of Joe Lysett when they had to paint the Taskmaster, and then Joe Lysett had to smile every so many yeah. seconds, and they get like more and more like insane, more and more freaked out because he's just trying his best. So like. It's just being unsuccessful again. Like, the spirit is there, but it's not being done successfully. Right. Uh, We then get the live challenge, which is make the longest noise. The longest continuous noise. Yes. Uh, Bonus point for the best noise. Bonus point for the best noise. Uh, Ron Funches drags a stool across the stage. Lisa Lampanelli also drags a stool across the stage, but for longer. Yeah. Uh, Kate, I like this idea, has the audience laugh. Yeah. So just continuous laughter. And she does like a little jig. Like she dances like, for it. Like, like she she's works Ashley for it. Simpson on SNL. It's very much that dance. Uh, Dylan hums. Yeah. And Dylan's kind of sucks. Lisa just says, fuck you, Alex. No, Lisa had been dragging it across. The oh, not Lisa. I'm sorry. Uh... Fred hums and Dylan says, fuck you, Alex. Yeah. Excuse me. Ron wins best noise because Ron went first. Mm. Uh, So he gets the bonus point. Uh, But Dylan, uh, I I think I have Dylan win. I have Kate wins. But she might, I think Kate won the episode. Yes, Kate wins the episode. Lisa wins for longest noise. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Kate lets Freddie hug raccoon goodbye and then's like I like my new mom better yeah <laughs> um this one like because not everybody puts something up you just kind of like feel bad about the prize tasks uh cause th- they get worse as though the prizes get worse in my opinion as yeah. they go on cause in episode 3 it's Kate's turn and Kate puts out Her medications and her medical records. Her medical records, which is like a fine bit, but it's also like not a prize. It just, I don't know, it feels a bit awkward. And then we get another famous task and proof that you need to change the tasks when you come to America. (laughs) And that's, they have to order a pizza on the phone. Most accurate pizza wins. Uh, You need to order a pizza... For the Taskmaster, without using any of the following words. Extra large pizza with pepperoni, peppers, pepper, pineapple, tuna, and dill. It should be noted that you also need to get all those things on on the pizza. pizza. (laughs) Extra point if you can make the pizza, somebody on the other end of the line say the word bubbles. Bubbles. Freddie and Lisa get hung up on at least once. Yeah, and that's important because they do this in Taskmaster, uh, the UK version. But the UK so polite they just try everyone's so polite but in this one like as soon as you do something a little strange like you know what's it called the round uh meat the round spicy meat like because you can't say pepperoni they just hang up on you yeah and they're just like well i guess that like 
It just shows how little this works. Yeah. The one thing that I really liked was you get a bonus points if you get the person on the other end to say bubbles, but you're allowed to say bubbles. It doesn't say you can't. Yeah. So some people realize that others don't. And Ron just goes, you say bubbles for me? No. Okay. Thank you so much though. <laughs> like does not push it at all. Yeah. Uh, Kate gets them to say it. And uh, Kate does the thing where she says the name on the order is bubbles and then asks them to repeat it back for her. Yeah. Because that's the easiest way. In Taskmaster UK, that's how people got it, was they said the word bubbles. Uh, all of them mess up. Everybody says at least one yes. word they're not supposed to say. Uh, I think I've cracked this task. Yeah. On how to do this. Because I just realized, like, there's nothing that says that you can't do this. Hi, I'm on a game show. I have to make an order, but there's a bunch of words I can't say. So I need you to help me, Okay. <laughs> Like, why not just be up front about it? Uh, nobody ever does the thing I would have probably done, mm -hmm. uh, which is I speak a small amount of mediocre French. Mm -hmm. I would just try to, like, say I was Canadian and just try to, like, awkwardly order in Franglish. <laughs> um, and, like, un, uh, uh, come on, uh, uh, like desperately trying to which means uh very large okay uh and try to order in like poor french and see if i could like get you, you would get hung up on in america <laughs> almost immediately it depends on where you are probably in la you would yeah mm -hmm. um but uh the next one is the camouflage yourself task I find this task very, very interesting uh, because it it was a weird task mm -hmm. in the UK version. Yeah. Uh, they have to take a picture or they have to appear in a picture and camouflage themselves so you can't see them. Uh, so they do things like uh, Kate uh, puts on a coat and stands near a coat rack. Kate's is by far the best. Kate also puts in like... Uh, decoys. Yes. Like she upsets a couch so it looks like she's hiding in the couch. It looks like she's hiding in a crate. It's very good. Uh, but Ron straps the chair uh, like the cushions of the lounge chair outside onto himself. Yes. And Lisa hides in a pole. Yeah. And they actually uh, composite the two of them hiding together mm -hmm. to see if uh, Reggie can find it. I do like the challenges where it is also a challenge for the Taskmaster. Yes. Uh, so I do like this challenge. Uh, I just don't have anything to say about it. I also have nothing to say about the live challenge where they have to make a balloon chain underneath like a barber smock. Yeah. This one's boring. Uh, yeah. I, like there's just... It's th visually uninteresting because they're under a smock. Because the problem is, they're not chatting about it. <laughs> like, instead of it being a discussion of, like, what your strategy was, it's just, here's the task, here's what happened, moving on. And you know what? That's how this podcast is going. Yeah, uh, Kate wins the episode, Kate wins her medical records, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, episode four. Lisa's $4,000 t-shirt quilt. Yes. Is and the prize. Also, how did you spend $4,000? Like... Those quilts are expensive. Don't get me right. wrong. They are not $4,000. Like, no. I own one of those quilts. Mine was less expensive than most uh, because my mother, bless her, uh, my mother made it for me. And I, I do love this t-shirt quilt, but it is very much like my old play t-shirts. Like mm -hmm. it's my old college and high school shirts. Yeah. And a couple of shirts that I liked, but like, they, time was unkind to them. Yeah. So these are not 4000 But she she exaggerates the $4,000 aspect. Right. Uh, Dylan legitimately wants it. Yeah, it looks cozy. So the first challenge is they're given a block of ice and they must make it disappear. Yeah. Few things to talk about here. Uh, turns out Freddy is a psychopath. 
Freddy beats it with a shovel while yelling, die, die, die. And claims he does not remember doing <laughs> that. Don't remember saying die, die, die. Uh, which is why I wanted to bring up Norman Bates. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it's very Norman Batesy. Um, that like, he's just, uh, and this was like right after Bates Motel ended. So like, he, he's probably just still a little bit in character. Mm hmm. Uh, so <laughs> I also want to point out this very interesting point. Uh, the women try to hide it rather than destroy it. Lisa puts it under a bunch of stuff. And Kate puts it in the pool and kind of just dunks it so it, like, vanishes for a moment, even if it does reappear. And they're kind of making the argument that it did disappear. It just reappeared. Yeah. It, and because the task is to make it disappear. And Reggie Watts says, I hear your points, and it's really good to hear you make them. And this is the point where I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe Reggie Watts has this. Because that is such like a belittling statement mm -hmm. because it's putting him in a place that it's higher where it's just like, oh, I hear what you're saying. I don't care, but I like that you're trying. And I, this is also when I realized that I feel like they're very limited in what parts of the house they're allowed to be in. Oh, interesting. Because they use the, this is a season one task again. Yeah. And Whittacombe and Frank go into the kitchen Mm -hmm. And use the oven and the stove. Yeah. We don't really see that. Yeah, we only see the kitchen like twice. Maybe they weren't supposed to use the kitchen. Uh, Ramesh does the Freddy Highmore way of just smashing the crap out. Yeah, just break it. But I was thinking about Tim throwing the ice block in the like in the pond. Mm -hmm. or, I guess the stream because it goes the, yeah, away. The river. Yeah. And then he claims it disappeared. And then Alex is like, well, somebody can see it. Yeah. So I just I had that thought. The next one is the Impress the Mayor. Okay. And I know you wanted to talk about this, so I wanted to give you... Thank you. This is, once again, the difference between the British version and the American version. In the British version, you can tell the contestants feel awkward. Because in England, it's a bit gauche to, like, brag. Yes. And, like, to just kind of be in a situation where it's, like, do something impressive, go, is tough in England. Especially with this British mayor who's, like, kind of stoic in, yeah. the, in the show. He's just kind of like, hmm, yeah, do something. In this, all the contestants are told, like, do something impressive. And they all spring into action. Like, yeah, okay, here I go. I'm really good at stuff. Which is a very American thing, to be kind of, like, proud of your own existence. And this is not me, like, telling you you shouldn't do that. It's just a fundamental difference between the way English people view themselves and Americans view themselves. Yeah. The real problem is the mayor also feels this way. There are times where it's very clear in the American version that the mayor's trying to be a wacky character. Yeah, like he wants to be part of it. Yeah, so rather than being stoic, which would be funnier to be a brick wall who's not impressed, he's like zany. Yeah, he's like, he, oh, what are we doing? It's like, no, no, that is not your role right now. Yeah, like he wants to, he wants this to be his breakout part. Yeah. Uh... There's some cute moments in this. Yes. Uh, Ron takes everything from outside and redecorates the office. I redecorated your office. <laughs> Which is just funny because, and this is really what made me tune into the mayor, is when it's Ron's turn, Ron goes, okay, can you leave for a little bit? And you can tell the mayor's like, but this is my camera time. Yeah. Uh... And Dylan tries to FaceTime Kate Hudson? Yes. And uh, she doesn't pick up. <laughs> she doesn't pick up. She picks up later during the, like, During the live show, show yeah. Which is fun. Uh, Dylan also does the calculator trick with Boobless. Oh, yeah. He turned this upside down and says Boobless. <laughs> Freddie writes the mayor's name in Arabic. Mm-hmm. Um, Lisa does time. And Kate does, like, some silly antics. Mm-hmm. 
So Ron wins because the mayor admits he is impressed by Ron's redecorating of his office. And then we get to the live task. Yes, the, uh, classic. It's a bowl of M&Ms, I believe. Mm-hmm. And you have to sort out the blue ones while wearing these boxing gloves. Yeah. Uh, Dylan's the very wise one who takes them off his hands and then wears them on his feet. So he can then... Then he just uses his hands and just does this as a yeah. normal day. Uh, which means that this episode initially ends in a tie. Mm-hmm. So then we get our only tie break of the series, where you have to guess how many Sundays uh, the Taskmaster has been alive. Yeah. Not a great tiebreaker, in my opinion. Yeah. It's a mathy tiebreaker mm-hmm. uh, that relies on you kind of knowing how old Reggie Watts is. Yeah. And Reggie Watts is very much in that 30 to 50 age group. Because we're like, he could be 32, he could be 50. Yeah. I often think of when they did, what number am I thinking of? Between yeah. one and a thousand? Yeah. Alex is like, it's written on my arm. And he pulls up his sleeve. It's like two, four, point. And the idea that, like, pretty much the first two numbers you've now seen don't mean anything. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, that's a decimal? Then who cares? That's a good, like, funny little silly bit. This just kind of feels like who knows how old Reggie is and can... Math. Math it out. Yeah. Who knows how old he is and can do slightly And then math. can multiply it by 52. Uh... Lisa wins her own blanket back, Mm -hmm. and she only shares with Freddy, who is the only contestant she is always nice to. Yeah. Uh, At one point, she tells Dylan to go back to his country. Dylan is also American. American, yeah. Uh, Then says, wait, no, that's Freddy, not you. Mm -hmm. Like, she's never mean to Freddy. It seemed to me like there was a bit that Dylan and Fred kept being confused for one another. And I think all of that was on the cutting room floor. Yeah, so young white joke voice. Had no, made no sense. Uh, episode five. Uh, this one begins with the prize task is Ron Funch's nameplate from when he worked on the Conan O'Brien show. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, this task is throw something into something else. Most unbelievable throw it wins. Yeah. This is fine. They all throw stuff. Dylan's is the only one that's like worth discussing. Uh, He repeatedly hucks solo cups over his shoulder to try to land one into a solo cup Alex is holding. Yeah. And it takes him 135 tries. Yeah. Uh, Kate throws a banana in a chimney. Yeah, it's... Ron throws a lemon at Alex... Yep. Uh, Freddie throws a football, <laughs> and Lisa throws Alex into a pool. Uh, and this was based on the throw something into the bin behind the fence challenge from season seven of UK Taskmaster. Oh, is it? It's not when they were throwing toast into the toaster? No, and like, it it's a bummer because like this is the very excellent season seven. Mm-hmm. So it's hard when you have that season. Yeah. Because, like, it's easily the biggest season. It's one of the best known seasons. Eleven's my favorite, but season seven is the one that's kind of, like, the one everyone likes the most. We then get Reach the Microwave in the Fewest Steps. Mm Mm-hmm. The microwave, which is in the shed, not the kitchen. Yes. Maybe they can't use the kitchen. This legitimately upset me at how dumb this was. Uh, well, in the um, in the UK one that did the same thing, they were at a track. It was the second location. Yeah. They're like at just like a field. Yeah, there, there are no second locations in this. No, it's all the generic reality show mansion. Yeah. Like, I don't... A villa. I don't think this is the Daisy of Love House, but you could tell me it was, and I'd be like, yeah, all right, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Fred and Ron crawl, zero steps. Uh, Dylan walks. He just takes 29 big old steps. Uh, 
Kate attempts to roll but doesn't get there in time. Yeah. And Alex just goes, the dream is over. <laughs> and Lisa, in, in an unbelievable decision, sees the pool behind her. <laughs> And, like, I don't want to get wet, but I want to win. So she jumps in the pool and then swims it, gets out of the pool, and walks the rest of the way. <laughs> uh, there's one great moment. When Ron crawls, he crawls along the pavement and he's like, this hurts my knees. Mm-hmm. And then he crawls across mulch and you hear him go, this is worse. This is worse. <laughs> uh, and that's one of the few, like, truly laugh out loud moments of mm-hmm. this uh series of his just very blunt this okay that's worse Mm -hmm. uh there is one quote i do want to talk about yeah where lisa says something like i thought i could get out of the pool without taking a step but i have the upper body strength of stephen hawking stephen hawking is the lost celebrity roast yes So, every year, there was a roast on Comedy Central. And they tried to pick people. Like, it seemed to me like the format of uh, the Comedy Central roasts were people who were famous for being that person. Yeah. So, it was like, it's William Shatner. It's Flavor Flav. It's uh, Donald Trump. Uh, Just, you know, oh, you know, that guy. It's Bob Saget. So they did the roast of Stephen Hawking, and apparently it's so bad it never aired. Yeah, I could, like, I could see it being. When would that have been? Would that have been, like, timely? I'm seeing if they have any... Uh, so, this was to happen in 2013. Okay, so it would have been five years ago. Because the Taskmaster's in 2018. And, uh, Stephen, well, it is timely. Uh, but, you know, now, it really... Uh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I love when research upsets you. No, I'm, I'm... So, Stephen Hawking dies... In March 2018. Oh. This show airs in April 2018. So I was trying... Oh! So I think it's accidentally timely. Yeah, he was probably alive when she said this. Yes, because the, I imagine the editing for this show is pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, based on what I know about the UK uh, the UK timeline, because mm-hmm. if you follow our Taskmaster on Reddit, you can kind of find out roughly when they're filming, when they're filming the chat show part, based on when it airs. Mm-hmm. And so they're usually, a lot of time goes by. So this probably wasn't as, like, this was probably timely by accident. Okay. Uh, So, I heard a weird noise. I apologize. Uh, It was a child, but it sounded like Navi from The Legend of Zelda. It did. Hey, listen! Hey! Uh, So, then we have uh, the... Egg live challenge, which is throw an egg through a basketball hoop and catch it. You have 100 seconds and one egg. Yeah, and once you break the egg... It's really hard to throw. Yeah. So, this is fine. Dylan, again, Dylan is the one who can think outside the box quickly. He puts his egg in his shoe. Yeah. And gets way more throws than everyone else. Yeah. Uh, Everyone else almost loses immediately, which is fun. Uh... This is where I notice uh, there's a very taskmastery thing they do where when they go to commercial, they have Alex doing something kind of related to one of the tasks and yeah. holding up a number of fingers to show which segment of the show they're on. Yes. They not only not do that, but they reuse the same handful of transitions throughout the show. It's like Alex playing pool with fruit. Uh, Alex underwater popping balloons. Yeah, they're complete non sequiturs in this one. Yeah, so it's just like watered down. Yeah. 
Uh, Dylan wins and is now Ron Funches. Yes. And he's really happy about it. Yeah. So, episode six. Episode six. So now I have We're some... out of competitors to bring a uh, prize for the prize task. Yeah. Uh, so now, uh, Alex has to bring something in. Yes. And Alex brings in a lion? Like a, a statue of a lion? He was not allowed to have a pet. So he brings a three-foot statue of a lion that served as his pet in childhood? Mm-hmm. Uh, named Mother. So, yeah, that's fun. Uh, I want to talk about the bit they do. Okay. Because sometimes, like, there's this real awkward bit in the beginning of every Taskmaster where Alex is like, do you want to have a bit of banter? Should we do some banter? Yes, and Greg, like, shoots him down in funny, yeah. mean ways. Uh, in this one, he talks about how Reggie is from the United States and Alex is from the United Kingdom. He's from a kingdom, Reggie's from the States, but they're both united. And then he brings out a Venn diagram to, to like, kind of show this. And the energy towards this bit is kind of like Reggie trying to make a bad bit funny. Yes. Where he's like, oh, what a, what a lovely chart you've made. There's a great moment in UK Taskmaster where Greg, like, rolls his eyes and says, I've gone on record about this before. Me and Alex have very different ideas of what is funny. Yes. And truth be told, this is a fine joke. It's not a great joke. Yeah. But it would be more helped if the Taskmaster was annoyed by it. Yeah. Rather than trying to help out. And that's just, again, part of the dynamic that's missing. Yes. So... The first one is to make a flag meal. You have to make a meal based on a flag. So, uh, that's, that's the challenge. Everybody kind of takes it in a different direction. I actually really liked this challenge because everybody went in a different way. Yeah. So, uh, I really... This was also a, um... This was one of the very, very, very first Taskmasters challenges. Uh, When I say it's one of the very first Taskmaster challenges, I mean this is from the Edinburgh Fringe. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, So this is something that was uh, kind of an early part of the Taskmaster. Like, they did a one-off special live show. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Taskmaster info is so useful for this. This was something from the Edinburgh Fringe, which is how Taskmaster initially began. Okay. Uh, this started as a Edinburgh Fringe show that kind of gathered ahead of steam and became a show first on Dave, right. which is a similar, like, it's kind of a not basic show. And now it's on Channel 4. So now yeah, it's like... the show in England, or the channel in England. Yeah, it's moved on up. Mm-hmm. And this also was done in Taskmaster Season 3. Okay. In the, like, regular ones. So. Yeah, they come at it at very different. uh, In very different ways. Yeah. Uh, Kate makes a flag as kind of like the mat that it's served on. And then uses ingredients to spell flag. Yeah, fettuccine, lemon, arugula, and garlic, I believe. Yeah, and then puts a flag in it. Yes. Uh, Meanwhile, Dylan decorates a cake. To look like the flag of Montana, yeah. where Reggie is from. Right. One of the few times we see somebody trying to appeal directly to the Taskmaster, not to Alex. Yeah. Uh, Freddie makes one and with markers and then announces that it is, quote, perfectly edible. <laughs> Three yeah. times. It, it's the flag of Nepal, but never re- it never really explained what the food part of this is. <laughs> Correct. Uh Ron tries to make a Japan flag pizza. He's like, cheese is white and pepperoni is red. But both of them turn brown in the oven. They turn brown in the oven. And Lisa is just trying to lose. Uh, Lisa's trying to make Alex throw up. Yeah. Uh, She makes a uh, U.S. flag hot dog cake with blue mayonnaise. Uh, she's doing what she thinks would be the funniest. Yeah. Because she knows that Alex isn't making the decisions, and so her 
gimmick in this is that she's antagonizing Alex. Yeah, and if Greg... She wins this task. Yeah, if Greg is the tas- taskmaster, of course he's going to be like, I like that you tortured my assistant. Yes, so. but we, they don't have that dynamic down. Mm-mm. Uh, so it's it's not as good. Now it's time for me to lose my freaking mind. It's the bridge task. Yeah. So in this challenge, there's like a model of the Taskmaster home and there's like a stream of water. Using only things on the table, create a bridge that can uh, hold up a potato. Highest bridge wins. Now, if you're familiar with the British Taskmaster. Which I am. Which you are. Uh, the way that they do this is the first couple people, like, try, and it's edited in such a way that you don't see anything, like, strange. And usually when those first people try, they are struggling. Yeah, they struggle, because, like, they're given, the things on the table are, like, gum, dry pasta, and, like, playing cards. Yes. So then, uh... The third person goes and notices a boat that says something strange in it in French. In French. It's Spanish in this one. In, this, in, in ours, it's, yeah, Spanish, but in French for the England one. And then he realizes after it says, look under the table. Yeah. Then in the next one, you see that it says, look under the table everywhere. Yeah, there, it's, there's so many places. Uh, there's a little sign over the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's... It's, like, written under, like, on the other side of the table from where you're standing. Yeah, if there's a button that you could press that lights something up that says it, but it's at, like, a weird angle. Like, there's all this information. So you watch these people struggling, not knowing that under the table is bridge is a bridge-making kit. Tape, scissors, wood, screws, everything. Yes. So it's a great bit to watch people struggle... Then watch more people struggle with this information. And then watch the person who figured it out. That's great. In this one, during the first person, there's always kind of like a, here's some shots to uh, establish the, the scene. They show you the stuff under the table immediately. But, and there's no mention, there's no bit about it. It's just like, I as the audience now know this, and no one's addressing it. This is abysmal editing. And Dylan uh, sees it at the end of his task. So they, they give up the joke, like, with Dylan, when Dylan sees it, instead of showing that at the end of Dylan being like, well, crap. Yeah. So they show, Dylan goes first, they show Dylan finding it out at the end. Then you watch three more people just not notice, yeah. which would have been much stronger if you saw one of those people suffer and then revealed it later that Dylan had figured it out, but not in time. Then Freddie almost immediately is just like, Ooh, what, what, this is technically on the table. Let me use that. Oh, it's a sign. Oh, it says look under the table. Oh, there's a bridge-making kit under here. I wonder if this British man who's a fan of Taskmaster is aware of this task. Yeah. I mean, that he finds it by... I, he almost feels like he doesn't hit the button mm-hmm. that lights it up. He finds the box and then breaks it until he finds the note. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes me feel like he knew. Like, he didn't want to look like he knew. It seemed like a person acting like they were surprised. Yeah, like, oh, I know it's in this box. How do I get it out of this box uh, without looking like I knew it was there? Infuriating. Infuriating that they ruined this. So, he obviously wins the challenge because he had the tools. Yeah. Uh, And then the last one is a two-part task where you prepare all of the items and then... After that part, you lift all the items in one hand. Yeah, you're given a bunch of things and it says you have one minute to prepare these items however you want. And then after you do whatever you want to them, it's like you now have to hold all these items in one hand and put your other hand on the head. It's fine. (laughs) Freddy immediately breaks his egg, (laughs) which is fun. 
And Kate wins the episode. Kate wins the episode. Episode seven, uh, all the contestants and Alex have given up something. So Reggie gives up a piece of like musical equipment that no one else knows what it is. Yeah, it's like a, it's a lime green thing. Yeah, it's a Line 6 DL4 modeler guitar effects pedal, which just kind of feels like he just looked for a piece of, like, equipment he knew he didn't want anymore. Uh, Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Um, Then we get probably the best task. Yeah. Uh, It is a piece of paper that simply says, fastest wins. Yes. Uh, Now, it's in invisible ink, and it's release Alex, which, again, they show us too quickly. Yeah. Uh, The best two to discuss here are Lisa Lampanelli, Mm -hmm. because she just doesn't. Well, we should... Let's discuss what the the challenge was supposed to be. Yes. So, basically, I'm going to try to go through this as fast as possible. There's a flashlight that lets you see invisible ink that tells you release Alex is the challenge. Alex is standing in the corner handcuffed. Yes. Uh, You then find something that says, look towards the phone. There's a phone that gives you like uh, some sort of code that unlocks something else. It it eventually told you to find a book and find a word. Uh, Like the 37th word. When you open that, the word is sheed. S-H-E apostrophe D which you're supposed to interpret as shed. Mm -hmm. You then run to the shed and there you find, I think that's where you find the picture. Yeah. Uh, It's a picture of Alex holding the keys. So Alex has the key in his hand the whole time and then you uncuff him and then that stops the clock. It's a fun little escape the room and they're fun to watch. Now talk about Lisa. Uh, Lisa does not find out that it says release Alex and she thinks she just needs to make her own task and she doesn't do it. Yeah, she's like, all right, my task is to rip this piece of paper. Good job, me. And then leaves. Uh, Dylan just stands up and says, do you have the key? Because Dylan tries to shake his hand and Alex doesn't do it. So Dylan gets up, pries the keys out of his hand and then just lets him go. Yeah. And Alex does have a good laugh about it. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> he just did it in 37 seconds. It's 20 minutes faster than everyone else. It was fun. It's it's a fun little bit. It's probably the best bit in the show. Yeah. Um. So the next one is uh, do the best POV footage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan's is okay. Dylan has Alex throw a flamingo on his head. Yeah. Uh, Kate does magic. She does a card trick, but it's cute. You can see the string. Uh, Ron tries to appeal to Reggie because it was his birthday. And so he tries to leaf blow out a cake with candles. And he was hoping that the leaf blower would blow the entire cake away. Uh, Lisa does like a weird force feeding machine. Yeah, she just tortures Alex and like grinds up like a bunch of weird food and then forces Alex to eat it. And then Freddy gets up on a bike and starts biking, like, along the sides of the walls and the roof. Yeah. That one actually, like, looked kind of cool. And it's cute. Mm-hmm. And when they show the footage of Freddy doing it, it's, like, half a bike and yeah. it's very silly looking. Freddy wins the task. Mm-hmm. The live task for this episode is the lowest unique number of donuts. This is one of my favorite challenges because it's one I think about all the time. Okay. You were given five donuts. You have to put the least number on a stick. However, if someone puts the same number as you, it doesn't count. So logically, you'd be like, oh, the answer is one. But everyone's going to think one. So maybe it's better if everyone else is going to put one if you put two. That's kind of the logic game you were having. Yeah. It's a very silly game, but like it's kind of deep and interesting. Uh, Lisa and uh, Ron just eat the donuts. And to kind of, like, ruin the game. Ron admits, I ate a lot of them. I ate a lot of donuts. Uh, Kate wins with four. Yeah, because two people do one. Dylan and Lisa do one. Freddie and Ron do two. Yeah. It's clever. Good job, Kate. Kate actually thought about it. Episode eight. The final final episode. episode. Uh, The prize task is something symbolic of each episode. It's just, like, a pizza, a rubber duck. The leaf blower. Yeah. The handcuffs. 
Uh, so it's just like a, a going away package. To the microwave, the, yeah. the basketball. Uh, so the first challenge is there's a bunch of ducks set up. You must knock over all the, or fell, I'm sorry, fell all the ducks. Because Lisa complains that he's English. Very British. Fell all the ducks while standing behind like one of those velvet ropes. Time starts when you knock over your first duck. I like challenges like this because the time doesn't start right away, so you have time to kind of, like, piece it together. Uh, Kate and Lisa try to start, uh, just yeet stuff at the ducks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kate keeps hucking a giant exercise ball, and Lisa knocks over a giant duck first, and then uses the giant duck. Oh, that's at their feet. It Uh, starts there. So Lisa just keeps throwing this giant duck. Mm -hmm. Freddy, however, rigs up a hose and a line. Like he drags the hose behind so that he can yank the hose and knock over a bunch of ducks and then the water pressure should take out the rest. Yeah. Very, very good. Very smart. Almost like he has seen, seen the show. Before. Uh, again, this is one of the things that's like a little annoying with Freddy is that I do feel like this is another one where he yeah. knew. Uh, the two big things here are Ron realizes you can move the ropes, so he just moves the ropes very close and then whacks everything with a pool skimmer. Yes. Uh, both Kate and Dylan leave a duck standing. The 101st duck, the, the, namesake, the namesake of my beverage. Yes. So they are both disqualified, uh, which is fun. Uh, which also is important because... Uh, Kate is like the front runner. Yes, and has been for several, which the this never lets you forget. Yeah, like Kate's always winning. So like, again, they spend too much time telling you the leaderboard, so it's not a surprise. Yeah. Kate, though, gets zero on this, and suddenly it's a race. Yeah. Suddenly, so I was like, all right, this is kind of exciting. Suddenly she could be caught by none other... Then Ron Funches. Ron Funches, who has not won a single episode, but has come in second a Ron, lot. at this point, has Ron wins his first task in this episode. It's the first time he ever came in first in a task. Which tells you that... But Ron was also never... Ron is never DQ'd yeah. either. And that's important. Like, Ron never doesn't get a point. Mm -hmm. Even if he only gets one, Ron's usually been pretty middle of the pack for the entire episode, or entire run. And because he doesn't have that extreme of coming in first or coming in nothing, it helps him a lot. So the next task is do something surprising with a potato. Yeah. Uh, Dylan overcooks it, which leads to my other favorite quote from the show. Well, the microwave has a potato button, which means even the microwave expected you to cook the potato. Yeah. Well, my favorite is Dylan is like, if you put a potato in a microwave, it explodes. And it doesn't. You have to put it in for a very long time. (laughs) So later, Ron Funches makes the potato into Reggie Watts. Yeah. And then looks at it and goes, you look really good. It's time for you to die. And then puts this potato that now has hair and like eyes and stuff in the microwave. And it explodes while he laughs. And Ron Funches gives the great advice of, yeah, if you want it to explode, you got to put stuff that doesn't belong in a microwave in there. (laughs) I love him. I love Ron Funches. Uh, Uh, Kate, I love what Kate does. Kate puts it in a basket and leaves it on Reggie Watts' doorstep. Yeah, she goes to Reggie's home. Uh, and Reggie Watts goes in the record as saying he thought it was, quote, potentially a cause for more security. Yeah. Uh, Kate doesn't win this task, which is kind of... Oh, Lisa makes a uh, word puzzle out of the potato. Yeah, she makes a joint, the letter A, and a toe. Or pot, a, a toe. toe. Potato. I think it's kind of fun. It's she wins, clever. and I think part of the reason she wins is it's actually like very nice. Yeah, it. She doesn't like shove it down Alex's throat. It's also or one of two times we see the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> uh, Freddie ziplines it for some reason. Yeah, it does not work. Yeah, so Kate doesn't win this challenge, which I was like, she brings it to his house. Yeah, she gets a solid three. 
Uh, she didn't turn it into Reggie Watts first, which is the problem. So, Kate is at 71, so she is catchable yeah. going into the last task. But only by Ron. But only by Ron Funches. It's time for heartbreak, gang. Yeah. While wearing a blindfold, inflate a balloon. Largest balloon wins. You only have one balloon. So the idea is you can't see how big it's getting, so it could pop at any moment. This is something they did in the British version where while they're blindfolded, uh, Alex pops a balloon just to scare everybody. Yeah. Uh, it should be noted that the task says nothing about wearing the blindfold properly. Yeah. Which no one takes advantage of. So, in a moment of pure heartbreak, (laughs) Reggie gets his balloon very, very big. Ron. I'm sorry, Ron. Ron makes the balloon very, very big to the point where he would probably win. And the balloon leaves his mouth and... And he can't find it. And Ron gets on his hands and knees looking for it. Reggie just gets up and takes it. So he can't find it. So, like, Reggie just decides Ron's not winning. And normally, on Taskmaster, I would think that is fine. I would think that's funny and shenanigans and stuff. However, the big thing on American Taskmaster is they've been shoving the scoreboard down our throats. So you're so aware that Reggie just cost Ron the season. Yeah. It's really upsetting. (laughs) And then, like, Ron takes his blindfold off, and he's just got it. Reggie just has the balloon sitting on his shoulder. Like, oh, are you looking for something? So, for a show that has taken a fun chat show and made it a hardcore competition, you made the last challenge pointless. Mm Mm-hmm. What a mistake. Very much. It almost seems like Ron wants to cry when they get back to their seats. Yeah, like, it's... It sucks. And Reggie, like, says something like, it was actually kind of beautiful, the way it tumbled out of your mouth. Yeah. And Ron responds, I was blindfolded, so I didn't even get to see that part either. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the end. Lisa wins this episode, I think? Lisa wins this episode, uh, but Kate wins the series. And that's just kind of the show. Yep. Um, So Alex Horn did acknowledge that they compromised far too much. Losing the prize task is unforgivable. Yeah, I I hate that we don't have the prize task. Uh, I hate that we don't get... I, I don't like the way they did the live tasks. I think too many of them relied on the blindfold gimmick. I mean, I think you're better off just doing... Prize, recorded task, live task. Because, like, you could then spend more time on that recorded task and do more with it. Yeah. Uh, But it just fails. It just fails to, like, really capture that magic because you're moving so fast. And you're far too concerned with the scores. And uh, Taskmaster, this isn't Taskmaster's only foray into the United States. Oh? Uh, It was COVID-era uh, it was an attempt at COVID era programming. You, you remember our episode on Killer Camp? Yeah. And how they ran Killer Camp in summer of 2020. Yeah. When CW was like hard up for content. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taskmaster season eight and nine. Really? Intended to be run as Sunday night content. Uh, CW didn't do much with it. And it just kind of ran, it, like Killer Camp, it ran quietly. I feel like eight and nine might be the worst choices. Yeah, I don't. You pick five. You pick the one with Noel Fielding in it. Because Noel... Is that four? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is four. Uh, You pick the one that has someone that people might recognize. Yeah, I would say pick the one with Noel Fielding in it. Uh, Also, just like, eight is largely reviled as one of the weakest seasons because it followed up... We love eight. (laughs) Yeah, but it follows up seven. Which is Which is usually deemed the best season... Uh, Eleven, which is my favorite season, has not yet has not yet aired when this happens. Right. Uh, it dropped. They air it once, and then it just goes to the CW streaming service. That's a bummer. Uh, now Alex Horn said he would happily welcome Reggie Watts or anyone who appeared on U.S. Taskmaster to the UK version if they wanted to come. 
I'm sorry if you're hearing thunder. We're wrapping this up right now. <laughs> but And it is raining a bit. But we got to finish this. Uh, the UK fan base hates this uh, season. They, I would understand why if you were a UK person, you would hate uh, They also hate Lisa. Oh, yeah. Lisa kind of ruins the show. And I feel bad saying that because Lisa's doing the best she can with her toolkit. Yeah. Like... Lisa's a hammer, so everything looks like a nail. Yes. And like on a lot of other shows, this would have been successful. Yep. Not this one. I feel like uh, Ron Funches and Freddie Highmore were like the two favorites from the UK mm-hmm. fan base. Because Ron is just so genuinely likable and Freddie Highmore gets the show pretty well. I would also argue Dylan and Kate get the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan does a lot of the, like when he wears the boxing gloves on his feet yeah. Uh, I feel like Kate would have been very good at the chat show aspect if they'd let her do more of it. Mm-hmm. But Alex Horn... Like, I would say what they're trying to do with Lisa, if, if I had to tie her to another contestant, would be Jamali. Mm-hmm. That, like, I'm annoyed and I don't care. I was but- going to say James A. Caster because this is following up season seven. Because uh, on our Discord... Yeah. Uh, our... Uh, our fan base had this theory that they were trying to type the American cast to the um, season seven cast. Yeah, which actually, now that I'm looking at this from our Discord, doesn't line up. No. No. Uh, season seven airs in September of 2018. The American Taskmaster airs in the spring of 2018. Oh, okay. So. Uh, I don't really know. They, it's just, I'm bummed out by how much I don't love this. Yeah, it's just, it's unsuccessful in every way. Uh, it's mediocre. Yeah, I would feel, yeah, mediocre's a better word. I would feel better if this crashed and burned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just, you and I, uh, this was one of those shows we were able to watch quickly. Uh, we didn't need to take breaks the way we have with some other shows. Mm-hmm. This was very digestible. It wasn't great, though. Yeah, I think if we were watching it from a place where we haven't watched British Taskmaster, we would probably be like, oh, this is a stay tuned because they'll definitely figure it out next season. Yes, but the fact that they had a number of very good seasons under their belt in the the UK Mm -hmm. before this is why I don't have a lot of hope. Why why I didn't have a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. Uh, so we're going to be honest here. We we took a little break due to storm. Yes. So we are going to come back and kind of chat about what we thought of the end of this and kind of bring everything to a close. So sorry for the weird jump in our energy level. Yeah, it's also the next day and it's sunny out now. But one thing I do want to point out is in the interim, I took the time to rewatch the clip that I was talking about that I told you all to talk about or to go and watch where... Mm-hmm. He throws the potato into the hole. And the one thing that, like, it really, like, reminded me about the differences here. When it comes to British Taskmaster, when a task is presented, my feeling is usually, ooh, I wonder how X will handle this. Because after, like, an episode and a half, I've kind of gotten to know these people. Yeah. Yeah. And I will see a challenge and think something like, ooh, Jamali's going to have an issue with this. He's going to get frustrated. Or, ooh, this is going to be a chance for Noel to do something very, like, out of the box and silly. Instead of having that in the American Taskmaster, instead of it being about the journey of the person, it's all about the score. Yeah. It's like, ooh, this is like, I wonder who will win this and get five points. And it's not whose line is it anywhere way where the points don't matter, but the points are not the show. The right. points are an element to get to the vehicle, like to get to the main crux of the show, which is like the journey of people and comedy. Yeah, they're an objective to give people something to squabble over. Right. It's, uh, and there's very little squabbling in the American Taskmaster. Correct. There's not a chance to really, like, argue for points. 
which mm-hmm. is also something that's missing. Uh, one thing that we've yet to really bring up that is also hugely missing from American Taskmaster are the team tasks. Yes, there's no there's no team tasks. There are none. Who do you think the teams would have been? I feel like it would have been Lisa and Ron. Okay. I, I kind of feel like it would have been those two and then the other three. Yeah, it's usually... And nobody in this... There was not a particularly older cast member the way there usually is with uh, UK Taskmaster. Yeah, it's usually split up by age for some reason. Yeah, it's usually reason. like the two eldest mm-hmm. and then the three like younger ones. And mm-hmm. that's their version of fair. Yeah. It's always been a very... The, ta- the team tasks have always been an odd thing. But that lack of relationship and interplay... Yeah, the team tasks, they're also always, like, very oddly scored. Like, usually with the team tasks, it's one team gets three and the other two, or one team gets four and the other one. Like, it's a very oddly scored type game. I, I don't quite understand the logic behind the, the way scoring works in uh, UK Taskmaster. Mm-hmm. And for U.S. Taskmaster to be so Mm score-oriented, it makes sense that they would try to avoid that. But I think team tasks are vital. Yeah. But again, one of the things that makes them vital is that they argue afterwards. And that's something they don't have time for in U.S. Taskmaster. And there was one in Season 8 where, like, Carrie—I want to say it's Carrie—cheats— in UK Taskmaster. I mean, I can think of a few times where people cheat. Uh, this wasn't a team task, though. Well, there's the one where Noel stops the the timer mm-hmm. so that they have more time and gets his team disqualified. Uh, well, the one I'm thinking about is uh, Sean. It's not Carrie, excuse me, Sean. Uh, Sean accidentally kind of like does something and then just begs for mercy on behalf of her partner Hmm. because she feels guilty that her cheating will affect his score. Right. And it adds just a dynamic that we don't get to see as much in this show. There's a great one in season seven. That's the James Acaster one, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Where uh, James Acaster looks at the other team performing and they have all these props and James A. Castor was like, why did they have all these props and we didn't have access to them? And they're like, you did. And then when you watch the other team, the first thing that happens is James A. Castor's teammate closes the garage full of props. Yeah. So he doesn't have it and you just see him lose his mind. Oh, that is one of the funniest ones. Like, they cut to a a still shot of the moment that James A. Caster sees that. <laughs> he's so upset. Oh, he's so mad. Like, the fact that we don't have time for any of those things really hurts the spirit of this show. Yeah. So, is it time for the verdict? I think so. What would you give this? <sighs> it's such a strange one. Mm-hmm. Because I would say... It's like an inverse game over rule. Mm-hmm. It's a stay tuned if they undid all the things they changed from the UK version. Okay. I feel like it's not really the game over rule because it's just undo the stupid changes you made to go to the US version. Yeah. I think for me it's a stay tuned because we're supposed to watch these in a vacuum. Because I know we've had debates before of, like, if they if this show stays tuned, these actors are not available to do these better product projects. And that's not a thing that we ever, like, consider with this. And it's not a thing with Taskmaster because they're not, like, at, it, everyone's per season. Right. But the point I'm making is we're supposed to be in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Which means we shouldn't be comparing it to British Taskmaster. If this is the only experience with Taskmaster you've ever had, it's still a fun show. Yeah, it's still okay. And, like, you'd have people just be like, oh, the British one is better, and and that would be fine. But if you had never seen the British version, is this a good show? Yeah, I would say it is. Yeah, 
All right, then stay tuned. I think it's enjoyable. So I would give it a stay tuned. Uh, That being said, I know that you have concerns that this will join the quest and clone high in the undoomed category. I don't think like concerns is an appropriate way to put it. Concerned for the validity of this show. I mean, it will be a thing that would just make us very happy. Yeah, like, I I don't think it's a concern. I just think it's something that is possible. It's been about five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I... I mean, I'm saying Clone- the validity of our show in covering shows that only ran one season. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's a huge deal. Some of them, like Clone High and The Quest, who on earth would have seen those coming back yeah. coming? Uh, Clone High is coming back out soon, I yeah. yeah, I'm very excited. But I do think this is a show that has a very high potential to become undoomed. Mm-hmm. And I hope it does. I hope it does as well. Because uh, you and I have both discussed independently that uh, Conan O'Brien is looking for work currently. And uh, he is, in fact, taller than Alex Horn. Which is important. Which is important. And he would make a fantastic Taskmaster. (laughs) Yeah, I think... um, I I also have that thought of, like, Sam Reich and Grant Mm O'Brien in a smaller budget version on, like, Dropout. Yeah. Would be a good Taskmaster and Taskmaster's assistant. I could just see them doing that as a one-off on Game Changer. That's true. Something that's just very similar to Taskmaster. I mean, in a way, Sam says is a little... Yeah. Taskmastery. I think uh, I think if people wanted it, a nice bonus episode would be you give us a show or a property, and then we'll spit out what the Taskmaster cast looks like. Yes. So maybe we'll do that a little bit later. So, like, give give me an example of what you mean by that. Like, okay, it's uh, the AEW roster. Who's the Taskmaster? Who's the assistant? Who are the five contestants? Oh my God! Yeah, stuff like that. The Taskmaster's Chris Jericho. Hmm, interesting, um, interesting. The assistant. I'm trying to think of who the assistant would be. We'll save this for the patrons. Oh, wait, 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 wait. And if you want to be a patron, go to patreon.com slash plus two comedy. You can sign up at the $5 level and talk to us on our Discord. And uh, we'll we'll do that bonus episode eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are we watching next week, Laura? We are watching Viva Laughlin. It's a two-episode musical. Yes, two episodes exist. (laughs) Also, thank you, by the way, to Matthew for not only being a super cool patron, but for recommending this episode. It was a fun one. Yeah. Where can people find us? You can email us at thestaydoomedshow at gmail.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And if your time starts now, I'm at Plus Two Comedy. And if you want to find out the rest of my AEW Taskmaster roster, I'm at Priorities. Until next time, stay doomed. Hey, I noticed you stuck around after the episode ended. Well, you get to know a secret. I've been working on a super secret project known as Enigmatix Taskmaster. It's my own version of Taskmaster, and it's going to be debuting next week over on Plus Two Comedy Gaming. So check out the gaming channel, that's Plus Two Comedy Gaming, and at some point next week... I'm releasing my own Taskmaster. Thanks for listening to the end.